Alrighty. We are continuing our Heartbreaker sew along today. And I am Claire. I don't know what you can see, so I'm just going to turn this. I'm Claire with uh, Claire's Creative Corner, the Facebook group where I'm hoping everybody joins so that they can share their fun makes and help each other out and hopefully see more tutorial videos from me. I am still getting the hang of it, but it's a lot of fun and I hope you join along as I try a bunch of things for the first time um, as a kind of new-ish bag maker. All right, so on this bag, um, if you've followed along for any of our other videos, this is the Heartbreaker bag by K as Kona Designs. Um, and I've cut out my pattern already. The um, original version I sewed up, I'll show it to you. The original version has a zipper along the front side of the gusset. She recently released an option to have your gusset with the zipper down the center. So that's the option I'm working on in this video. Let me show you what I've done so far. I sewed some pockets up on a previous um, video and of course I was muted so that was fun. Um, but this is my outside front main piece. I have it interfaced, in, interfaced with uh, some Pellon interfacing that I had in my stash. It's pretty thick and firm though to hold the shape of the bag. I believe this is a silky water resistant canvas from Backstitch and it is such a blast to sew with and it's very pretty. It's got a nice sheen to it and I like the way it holds up as the lining. I didn't interface it. Um, that's a personal preference. This is the interior zip pocket. She provides this really fun overlay that has a little heart attached to it. I used my Cricut to cut this out and I just stitched around it with some variegated thread. The glitter on this, I think this is also a backstitch um, vinyl. I can't remember correctly. But the glitter is so bright you can hardly see any of the stitching, which is fine. It hides any sort of errors, but it is stitched down. Um, and then there's the pocket bag on the inside. Um, so that is one of the interior pockets. Um, for my other pocket, I'm going to have a slip pocket. So she has an option to carry this bag as a crossbody, which is what this option is. It's got straps on both, or uh, D-rings on both sides to attach a strap to. Um, her other option is to add D-ring tab connectors at the top and a back loop piece to thread a strap through. And um, I'm going to see if I can't figure out how to do both options on this bag so I can convert from one to the other as needed. Um, in her original pattern, there's an option for an exterior heart slip pocket. Um, but if you're going to do the backpack option, you obviously can't have um, a pocket back here. So I'm going to do that slip pocket option on the inside of the bag. It'll be on the uh, inside front piece. Um, so that's what I'm working on right now. Originally, it was going to just sit in the seam allowance, but I don't want all that bulk um, since this is a bag that we're binding. So I'm going to sew, sew around and leave an opening and turn this out and make the heart a little smaller so that it sits outside of my seam allowance. Um, I never did change my thread color. We'll just start here uh, and go from there. I'll change my thread color when I want to top stitch. So this is my Juki 2010 I'm sewing with. I love this little girl. I'm not very good at bag naming, but it is a girl. She is very reliable. It makes pretty stitches. So I'm gonna leave an opening here so I'm gonna back stitch. And then leave an opening probably like three inches so it's big enough to uh, pull the bag through and then 
backstitch at that. Alright, so let's see if I can't turn this. Not going to be easy, but where there's a will, there's a way. There we go. Getting there. Push and pull. <laughs> there you are. You don't want to rip anything, so you're always so gentle. Sometimes you feel like you're not getting any progress, but it's happening. There it is. Alrighty. So, push out all my corners. I didn't catch that corner all the way, but this is a bag for me. And I'm kind of going through and getting it to work for me as I'm able. Alright. Now, my little ruler here and push this bottom corner out. Give us a nice pretty point. There we go. Okay. Roll our seam allowance. Kind of press it so it holds its shape. Get over to this side. Same thing. I'm going to tuck in these raw edges. And when we stitch this down to the lining, we'll be closing that opening. Here we go. Just stitch nice and close to that edge. And close it up. Here we go. Now the interior lining piece I'm gonna put it on oh I wanted to add a fun tag there let me see and put it right in here and let's just stay out of the seam allowance so I think right about there should be good where did my little tag go yeah mm -hmm put it on the pocket but now that I've flipped it out the stitching will show through on the inside but you know what I like that spot so I'm gonna do it make it some double sided tape to hold that down I use um, the geeky double-sided tape from Wizardry Stitchery. I really like it. It holds very nicely. So, I'm just going to stick a strip right on here. And put it centered on this heart. Now don't do what I did, but this is what I'm doing. Make sure you do this before you get your heart all sewn up so that your stitch line doesn't show on the back side. But I'm just going to stitch up and down. So it'll be just two stitches here and here. Now let me get the thread I want. I was using Celebration. Where did I put it? Oh, here it is. And... This is a Tex 35, also from Wizardry, and it's got such pretty colors in it. 
some blues and purples. And I think it goes perfect with the print that I picked. Can't go wrong. And I'll have to find my bobbin. Let's see where I put that guy. this works and sometimes it doesn't. Come back here. All right. <laughs> I am just bound to turn to get to work, but no. All right, I'll just thread it with my eyeballs. to wind that bobbin again. Running low. That's gray. Strawberry. on the ground. <laughs> I wonder if I put it in the drawer. Oh, here it is. It was a snake. It is at me. I love these little bobbin holders for my text thread because it's poly bonded and so it's kind of like stiff and it wants to unwind easily. But these little rubber bobbin um, covers are really nice. Okay, now let's get this guy in. All right, so we're just going to do this one up and down. Got a little messy back here, but y'all, this is the inside of the pocket. Normally, you would have done this before you closed your pocket. All right, such a cute tag. This tag is from Kylie and the Machine. It was a little advent calendar um, that. I think it was like from last year, not the 2023 one, but like 2022 or something. Um, and I, uh, I got it um, for Christmas. Um, Cause I think I had missed uh, the window for getting the 2023 one. So, but I mean the 2022 one was just as nice. I'm hoping to get into one of the um, clubs soon, like the little monthly uh, label clubs. I'm trying to shove my my end that's not completely finished in, but it's not going to happen. I need to decide how I'm going to hold this in place. I don't know that that's going to hold so very good for me. I think I'm just going to put a little bit of tape in a couple spots.
I ran out of one eighth inch double sided tape, so I kind of cut my quarter inch in half if you're wondering what I'm doing. <laughs> Alright, so we're just going to sew along the outside edge, not the top. Don't want to close your pocket opening. not this difficult but it's because I tore it up that it doesn't want to behave I can see it right there I'm going to edit this out there it goes silly to have real nails. My nails are so short and broken. Now, my final that I'm using is pretty sticky. I put just a little bit of Sewer's Aid along where I'm going to be sewing um, to help my foot kind of glide over that. There we go. All right. You don't want to get this on your water resistant canvas. Um, don't ask me how I know. So clean your fingers real good. All right, and just one eighth inch from the edge. And this is where our turning hole is. Obviously, your pocket did not need to be shaped like this. I had already cut this out, and so that's why I just decided to use it this way. Um, I'll show you the inside of the other bag. The slip pocket in here is a little different. Here I went straight across and then did some div dividers um, by sewing down two different channels. So... That's another option for a slip pocket. This is just the one I'm making up currently. So we're going with it. So here's one of our interior pieces, our other interior piece, an exterior, and my other exterior. Now that we've done that, we gotta look at the time. All right, we've got some time. We can go over The D-ring connectors. Do I want to do that yet? I'll probably come back to that because I want to see where I want them on my gusset. This is a modified gusset that we're doing. 
Um, so let's do the convertible backpack uh, step. Now this is step 21 if you're following in the pattern. All right. I need two or three of these. I'm just gonna bring them both over. We're gonna mark the centers of our D ring connectors and add a strip of double sided tape and fold it in. So let's do that. Now, the correct way to do this would be to um, actually. Get your ruler and mark your center and then put your double sided tape on. Now that we've got our centers marked, we're going to fold the outside edges in to meet that center line. All right. So, let's smush it there onto that double sided tape. Throw our clip on. Meantime, bring our other side up. And press. Clip both sides. These are also good clips to use. If I can remember where the rest of them went. One. There we go. And now that we've got this one done, I'll do this one, but we're going to sew one eighth inch down both outside edges. Your seam allowance just all the way down that edge. One eighth. also do what she does in the instructions instead of what I did. Uh, you could put a piece down this edge and the other edge like that. It's kind of the same idea but more uh, real estate for that double sided tape to stick instead of half of it if that makes sense. Come on. Extra heavy duty with the tape here. Once you sew these, you'll grab your D ring and thread it on. So let's sew these down. going to need some sewer's aid on the bottom as well so it doesn't stick to the plate. And then if you feel like there's still residue before you sew something else, you can probably um, come back in here and clean it off your plate.
So here's this guy. You can see the stitching along the outside edge. Same thing with this piece. I think we still got some Silver's Aid. D-rings. These are one inch. So find those guys. So I'm not out of oops, throw thing. Here's one and two. Whoops. Need to get me a better organizational system soon. I really don't have enough hardware yet to make sense of that purchase yet. All right. Slide your little D-ring on. Fold this over. I'm just going to clip it together. For now. Once I get this one on, I'm going to baste my ends together right here. Oops. Sticking to my finger. All right. All righty. And then this guy. We're just basting that end closed. Since this is the backpack version, we're going to grab our back loop. Mark our middle. All right. I think the middle is right here. What about the pink? our middle marked. Grab our double sided tape and do the same thing that we just did with our D ring connectors. So one piece on this outside edge and move it over on this. There we go. Press this into the center line, and then we'll top stitch those edges again at 1 8 inch seam allowance. It's real close to the edge there. Here we are. Nice and crisp.
snip. That's good. In the instructions, we're going to turn it to where it's wrong side up. Alright. So, we're going to turn this wrong side up. And we're going to fold one end up. One inch. Like this. Give it a good press. And then our other piece, the other end, we're going to fold to meet that edge. There we go. Okay. Now she wants us to set this aside and we're going to get our outside back panel and that's this one right here. All right, three inches from the center of our heart. This is actually better done. On a big cutting mat. But let me mark the center here. Here we go. And then three inches. We're going to make a little mark. So it's right here. And the same thing here, three inches over, right there. We fold this together. They should be in the same spot. Let's see. Looks good to me. All right. So those are marked, and then we're going to make a mark one and a half inches from the bottom center. So let's make our bottom center notch. And one and a half inches up from this mark. Align it on that center mark and baste that in place. Both of these. There we go. Okay, let's get that basted here. And then our back loop piece, we're going to align it on that mark. Ah, oh, I see it now. That, I thought that looked wrong. Okay, ignore me. This does need to overlap. Okay, so fold the top part down to where it's almost to where it's one inch from the edge and then bring this up. Okay, 
It all makes sense now. Okay. Now that we've done that, well, I gotta trim that. Don't want it to show. All right, here we go. Back to that. This gets lined up on that bottom line. And then you can stitch this down or you can use rivets to hold it in place. She has a picture in the tutorial with three rivets holding that um, or Chicago screws or whatever. So make sure this looks nice and straight. over here stitch this down So that's the back loop right here, just like that. Let me double check to make sure that's what it looks like in the tutorial. All right, yeah. Okay, let me check the time. Where's, oh, I took my watch off. All right, I'm gonna stop here after the um, backpack connectors were placed, okay? And we'll come back and we'll do um, our gusset and our zipper installation on the next video, okay? Bye guys.